Hey, CWGT here, Chris White, Google Training. Don't know if I've ever remembered doing a webcast or vlog, whatever you want to call it, um, on Google Drawings before, but we're going to give it a shot today. Let's take a look. So I follow a woman named Chantelle Manahan on Google+, and she has a blog, Laughing, Learning, and Leading, and on it she mentioned 10 reasons Google Drawings should be in your classroom radar. Uh, I don't use drawings a lot, so I thought it'd be an interesting read, and it was. First, she starts out with interactive posters. She has 10, re 10 ways to use it. Um, nice thing here is you can add text, you can add photos, you can add hyperlinks. You can create a poster with a lot of knowledge. And another nice thing about it is in Google, it's collaborative. You can share it with a group of people as well and all work on it at once. Maybe each kid has to put a different color note on four or five different pages and um, create something that way. Number two, text annotating and close reading. You might not need to do this, but if you took a picture of the text, let's say you gave every student a two-page spread to do something similar to this to, you could talk to them after their first time annotating and talk about the goods and the bads and what would you like to see and what you wouldn't like to see as a classroom activity when you're teaching that. So that's another uh, kind of neat idea. Uh, graphic organizers, I think we're all pretty familiar with that. One she uses here is a chart for the Odyssey, looking at Odysseus's leadership, his strengths and opportunities. And they, she put a picture in the background and uh, made the transparency higher so you could write in here. And you could share that on Classroom or Hapara, something like that, with the class. Manipulatives, uh, this one's kind of cool. She did a vocabulary list and had the the words on the arrows and then the definitions there and if you click on one of these get it to turn to one of these four arrow things you can drag it to the correct answer I'm not looking at the answers but you get the idea and there's lots of ideas that pop in my head just looking at that so that's kind of cool so that's manipulative Div digital signatures um, pretty self-explanatory I think you can go in to a drawing and click on uh, scribble and you know you can put i don't have a mouse right now i'm doing this with the uh trackpad but it's a little choppy at first but then it uh, smooths out once you look at it so digital signature mind maps i think you're many people have done inspiration or something similar very easy to do on google drawings sketch noting visual learners like that i think you can uh, have shapes fonts colors freehand with the scribble Mouse would be better, so that might be interesting. Timelines, um, I think there was one, I want to say there was an example. Oh, yeah, there it is. So you could give them the timeline and have them fill it in. This one's Native American oral traditions. You could either have everybody in the class work on it, or you could have um, one copy put into their Hapara folder or their classroom folder. Um, storyboard, if you're doing filmmaking, that'd be a great idea. Um, it would fill, you know, that that gap between uh, filming and editing and make the editing part a lot better. The bottom one you see, it's sort of animated down here. Create custom backgrounds for Google Slides. Some people might be a little perplexed by that. Let's just go look at some slides. So what I did here is I went in and just put four pictures in here. And it's okay if it hangs over like this. It'll cut it off later. But if you, you click on here and click on image options when you place the photo it there is automatically but you can change the transparency of these transparency of these so you wouldn't want this as your background so you can just drag them over here and make them lighter and then you can actually copy all these pictures so use the selection tool copy them all go over to google slides and paste them in and then you can um, type on top of that so there's 10 uh, ways to use Google Drawings in the classroom. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm sure if you find uh, Chantel Manahan online, you could ask her the questions too. Please consider subscribing if you like this video. I try to come out with one every Friday, and my followers are what keep me going. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.